the value of pop cool air. And um, and for the reason again. Aloha and Bonnie. Welcome to everyone. Okay, we're going to show a, a film now, and then please excuse some some parts of it are corny because it's film with me talking. But um, the point I'm trying to make is that at the ending, it that talks about the transition into how we can help change the world through our efforts in our small way, because it all kind of like in a pool, you throw a rock in the pool and it spreads out. The same thing can happen with what we do and our behavior. Then we'll go into some of the other things on our. And then we're going to pass it out while the film is running. Okay. Now get out of the room. Future brought to you by the Kalani Foundation. I'm Ahu Kekahu Cardwell, and here we are out today on the windward side of Oahu. We got a great guest, so let's go on over here and meet her. Mahilani. Aloha. Aloha, Mai. Aloha. Welcome to Voices of Truth. Welcome to Ko'ala Koko. Ko'ala Koko. This is wonderful. Look on here. Look at we have Chad in the background. Yeah. And it's Mokali. Mokali. <laughs> it's a wonderful day out here in Hawaii. And so let's walk this way. And you brought us here today to talk about something very interesting that's going on in Hawaii right now, yeah? Well, it's starting here in Ko'olaupoko. we are starting right here. Yeah, well, in the Ko'olaupoko local district on the winter side, the lower and lower side. And uh, in Ko'olaupoko, we are uh, setting up boundary markers with signage right now. And the boundary markers are to identify where the traditional boundaries lie for our Aupoa uh, here in the winter. Aupoa are throughout the whole island. That we but those divisions are called Hawk Wall. Correct. And then after Western Contact and the Western Ways came in, that got lost. And now it's being revived again. It's never been lost. I think some people have forgotten it. Gotcha. And so we're trying to reestablish where these boundaries are as best we can using uh, old maps and uh, using natural, or, uh, natural features of the landscape, which Hawaiians might have used. Also, Mark about. What we had with the Alpha system, which was very successful for many centuries, was the people in the Alpha took care of their resources. Uh -huh. they, that was their kuleana, take care of the hyena, take care of the ocean resources, and take care of their people. So that worked very well, and our people thrived under the Alpha system. So we think that 
by reinstituting that thinking about Alama Aina, taking care of your Kuleana, uh, we will be able to sustain our people for generations to come. Wow. You know, Mahila, it sounds to me like an Ahuwa, because it's from the mountains to the ocean, is a complete cycle, yeah? Because you have, the, you have all the resources right there. The ideal Ahuwa had all the resources for the people in that Ahuwa to survive. Yes. To, to do their work, to, to make their food, to gather their food, and to do whatever they needed to do. So wow. they had to have some access to the ocean. You know, there are some Ahuwa that appear landlocked, so they were given land that had ocean and beach resources so that they could get sea, sea uh, life as part of their uh, sustainability. Wow. So you guys have come along. And you said, we're going to put this thing back on the map, yeah? Correct. Wow. How long have you been doing this? Well, we've been planning it for maybe four years or so, four or five years. We're able to get the state and the city to agree to putting in these signage markers when also later on we the stone house markers, which were the traditional ones. So they agreed to the symbol. It's a new state standard for the Alpua signs. And uh, our goal is to encourage these, these signs to be Statewide. So you said they're going to add stone markers, yeah? Yeah, our, our hope is to add, to build stone markers uh, near the boundaries or in the boundaries, wherever our signs will be located. Um, and they will only be allowed where it's safe enough because some of the roadside areas are too narrow, so we may, be, may not be able to put the markers everywhere. But we're going to mark them as, as many places as we can at the boundaries of the Alpha. Wow. So this is going to be throughout Hawaii, yeah? all islands. Huh? Well, our project is only about Ho'olau which is the district on Oahu, Where we on are the right southern now. end of the, of the windward side. Wow. So I know that Y and I, the city clubs out there, are working to put signage out there as well. And they also have plans for uh, stone Oahu uh, markers as well. Other clubs are starting to say, we would like to mark our Ho'olau too. So uh, we're going to encourage all of Oahu to do that. Uh, and uh, hopefully, statewide, other other communities will want the same. To connect the people with their Ahupua and to help reintroduce, remind people, even the new people who have moved in, that it is the kuleana of the people living in the Ahupua to take care to Marlama, that area. So they don't have to take care of everybody care. else. they got to take care of their own backyard. Yeah. That's yeah. the ideal. Sounds to me like something that's really going to catch on. I hope so. You know, I mean, caught on hundreds of years ago, we just want to bring it back right. so that it's working again for the people. Right. Our civic club started it, but we really knew, we knew it had to involve the other civic clubs in Ko'olau Poco, so we invited them to be part of the steering committee, so they were partners all the way, as well as the neighborhood boards. Neighborhood boards are elected by the communities within these Ahupua, so we thought neighborhood boards were also important because whether they're Hawaiian or not, Kuleana is still there. they got to take care. Neighborhood boards generally care about their aina, and so it was a, a natural fit. And so we worked very well with our neighborhood board here in Colorado. So it wasn't hard to get them to buy into the project? No, it was <laughs> not how it was. It was interesting because what we did when we, uh, one of the things we learned was that Mauna Lua was part of Colorado Poco. It was a, a part of the Waimana Lua, well, which is interesting because that's Hawaii Kai, and a large area used to be a fish pond. So we don't know why, but Mauna Lua is part of Colorado Poco. So we went to the Hawaii Kai neighborhood board and we said, welcome to Koala Poco. And they smiled and they were happy. I was interested. I thought they would want to stay with Kona, but they were happy to be part of Koala Poco. Wow. So um, the boundaries of Koala Poco on the, uh, the south end is at Kulio. Wow. Wadonawa is a very large Ampua. When we went to the Wadonawa neighborhood board, you know, we asked the question, why is Mauna Lua part of Wadonawa Ampua? And the, the speculation was that the land that Waimanawa were given to Queen Kalawa by the Tukai King, and it's possible he gave her Mauna Lua because of the large fish pond, because there was no large fish pond in Waimanawa at the time. You said earlier that the Ahapua system had been forgotten about, yeah, over time, through time. It was never, it was forgotten by a lot of people. Some of the old communities still understand and remember. As I was as I was growing up, you know, my tutu would tell me what Ahupua we were in. Whenever we were going out really? riding on the Windward Coast, she would describe this is the Ahupua, you know, place by place. So that was um, how I learned okay. about at least the Ko'olau Poko Ahupua. And um, I think there are other families that have the same kind of uh, uh, teachings, cultural teachings from yes. their kupuna. Yeah. And uh, so we hope that by 
revitalizing, revitalizing the interest and the support for the Aqua Council. You know, it's in the state regional plan, it's in the county sustainability plan. So we are hoping that we can get government and the broader community to think Hawaii. So how did you guys know where the bonds were? were this, it, it mostly was forgotten. Where they should be placed? Yeah. Okay, we, we, we knew that they were placed usually according to Ridge Lines or Strip. We took the, the last uh, official map of the Kingdom of Hawaii, uh, Kingdom of Hawaii 1876 map. And that map showed the Alpha boundary. And uh, we felt that that was, the steering committee had to vote on this, and they decided to go with that map because it was the, the last official map recognized by the MEC of Hawaii. And generally, it was the Lee who, you know, uh, decided who got lands and what was where. Uh, so that boundary was more traditional than later maps that are found um, inside Kauai and other, other materials. So Mahilani, you know, what is the difference between what we have here in Hawaii now versus the Ahakua system? Well, I think we have a, a disconnect that, that can be corrected with not too much trouble, actually. We have a lot of, we have a community that cares. They care about these items, generally speaking. Right. But they're so distracted with other things, they are not as connected to their aina as they could be. Uh -huh. So we want to teach this model of stewardship from the youngest age to the kupuna age. We want to re, uh, kind of re reinvigorate our people with that, that idea that Hawaiian cultural value of being a part of the whole, the holistic system of the Hawaiian Culture. It was really, a, we're all part of, we're all one. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you know, one thing that was, strikes me as you're saying this is that back in the old days pre-contact, there were about as many people living in Hawaii as there are today, yeah? That's, that's uh, some theory, yeah. yeah. And yet, no, no food was imported. No, no food. But today, survived on most all food is imported. Yeah, no sewer lines, no electricity. Right. No water lines. And no water bays, everything was through the streams and the ocean and whatever. They, they, they tried. So it sounds to me like with the reintroduction of the Aqua system, maybe, 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 just maybe, we could start to migrate, migrate back to a system where we don't import, well, have to import so much food. Yeah. That's one of the things we're looking at. Being more sustainable ourselves, we want. So providing more of our own food. Yeah. And so we, we're doing that here throughout island reviving the taro fields and supporting diversified farming. Uh, there's a lot of concern about genetically engineered food, so we want to make sure that the food is pono, so that the people are safe for generations to come. Yeah. Great. So besides food, what other things might shift back like that under a Hapua system? Well, you know, we can use some of our uh, alien vegetation for green waste, so it helps power electricity. We can use some of the vegetation like bamboo. We were trying to clean up Kohaiku Valley. There's a lot of bamboo in there. They're used for housing uh, you know, uh, supplies, you know, to, to use as a kind of wood. So some of those uh, things that might be opala can actually be made valuable to us as well. Something that might be considered trash at first glance Correct. is Correct. actually very valuable. Right? And you know, Hawaii has never wasted anything. That's right. They took everything you can't. and they had a use for everything. Yeah. Right. Yeah, you can't afford to. It's an island. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Wow. So are a lot of people excited about this? Well, I, I know that the, ex the interest is growing. And uh, we know it takes time. We're patient. We're going to help raise awareness wherever we can, one person at a time. We're so grateful that the spirit of our Hawaiian people is living again and, in, and entering everyone's uh, the house that everyone supports this idea. Why are you involved in this project? Well, my kupuna um, of our family asked me to help work with other local families to restore the Hawaiian Civic Club, which had gone dormant for some time. You know, really? It, it was it was established in 1937. My my, my tutu, Kane, Papa was one of the founders of the Hawaiian Civic Club in 1937. Wow. So our kupuna in our family asked. Can you guys go start it up again? So we did several years ago. And um, so as part of the 
reawakening of our interest in the civitas was a reawakening the interest of our community in the, in the cultural um, treasures of our of our of our community. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. That when you get one, the other one comes along with it. There's a link there. Yeah. And our kupuna are with us all the time, living and dead. They're with us all the time, guiding us and helping us to know what to do. Wow. Sounds to me like it's probably impossible to do one without the other, yeah? Yeah. Wow. Great. Uh, well, if we pay attention, and this is, you know, some of us are so distracted with, with electronics that we, 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 we forget or we don't hear, and there's so much out there that we can learn from. We just need to be patient and learn. You know what? I'll tell you something right now, my dear Len. You strike me as one of those people that pays close attention. I can't help it. They are yelling in my spirit all the time. Ah, very good. <laughs> I've gone from a handful of people to, you know, several hundred people now. So. Really? Wow. So it's like, you know, in 1937, or in the late 30s or early 40s, the Kola Fukuhoi City Club had 3,000 members. Okay. So their membership was from Makapu all the way to Waimea uh, Valley. Wow. So all, all the people who, who were, all the families used to belong to the club. So uh, that goal is to, re, to bring us back to that strength. Now our geographical area that we work with primarily is Kaneohe Bay. The Aupua from Kaneohe to Kualoa is the, 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 the Aupua that we work with. Mm -hmm. There is the Kaiwa Hawaiian City Club that handles that Aupua, and the Waimanalo and the Mauna Lua Hawaiian City Clubs handle Waimanalo to Mauna Lua. So, we respect that there are new clubs and they handle their kuleana and we handle ours. And so how many members you got in the club right now? We have uh, over 200 right now. Oh, very good. Yeah, we're one of the larger of the board. Very good, very good. Okay, so you restarted the club, you grew, regrew the membership, grew yep. up the membership, yep. and then all of a sudden you guys realized, wait a minute, there's more to this than that. Oh, our club, they, every time somebody comes up with an idea of something they'd like to work on, we say, my kai, go for it. <laughs> and, so you know, all lights are green. All lights are green. Wow. We, we do try to watch out for each other. If anybody's getting into an area that they need help with or they need to be cautious about, we try to help each other. So there's a lot of um, cross-training and mentoring each other all along with the kupuna and the young people as well. So is this Ahapua system uh, project you guys are working on, is that like the largest one in the club? Oh no, we have so many other projects we're working on. We have the Heio Wetlands, which is 400 acres. We're trying to restore to Kalo and other food crops. Uh, and we got a lease uh, for 38 years from the ACA to uh, restore that land to productivity. Wow. We are trying to establish a culture preserve in Haiku Valley, and we're trying to work with Oha and Hawaii Homelands to clear that valley of the alien stuff and, and restore that whole property to a, a good cultural area. Wow. Again, um, we have many other things we're working on, but yeah, we have lots of things going on. We're really an active club. It sounds like it sounds like you guys are busy people. Yeah, but you know, the, the thing is that the people in the club, wonderful, wonderful members, they work hard, but they have fun. You know, we, told, we tell them all the time, if it's not fun, then we don't want to do it. So every task we take on, we make it something that is enjoyable and fun. Because otherwise, we lose members. Yeah. So members do what they want to do. They don't have to do everything. And, and that's what makes our club strong. Wow. You know, Mahalani, we have voices of truth viewers not only throughout Hawaii, but all over the world. Literally, our show airs all over the world. So there may be somebody watching us right now who's sitting there thinking, well, you know, what she's done is really great, and I'm inspired, but I could never do something like that. What would you say to them? You can find the boundaries of the Aupua where you live, and you can teach the people to Manama their own Aupua, wherever you live. Because Aupua is a word. I'm sure the Native Americans have a different word for the land boundaries where they live. In New York City, there are Aupua traditional boundaries that the, the natives that there once you know, observed. And you can do the same idea of stewardship and <coughs> connection with your Aina anywhere in the world, anywhere. So if they want training, they may come to Hawaii and less training. So you don't have to be in Hawaii to find your own, discover your own ahapua. That's right. We should all know where we live and how we can care for the places that we live. Wow. And what motivates you? What makes you get out of bed each day like this? The fact that we have so much to do. We want to do a lot of this stuff before we die, right? So there's 
nowhere to go but up, and we, we want to lift up the Hawaiian people. We, I believe the Hawaiian people are put on this earth to teach the whole world yeah. about the Lord's spirit, about this idea of caring for the island and the ocean and the people, with aloha, each other and where we live. So I think that's our kuleana from Akua. And so that's what gets me up is that I think we got a lot more to do. we got to keep, keep, and I do like the official tag. <laughs> I'm not the president. Oh boy, the secret is out. <laughs> <laughs> so, but they're a good club, and I'm so proud and honored to be a part of them. Wow, but you know you're right. Hawaii really is the showcase for the entire planet. Because if we can get it right here, everybody can get it right anywhere. You know? So that's a, that's both a, a, a huge opportunity, but also a very serious responsibility. <laughs> You know, Hawaiians had a kind of a legend, or I don't know, story of Olelo they shared. He said they believed that the Hawaiian Islands were the people of the whole universe. The center. And they actually knew where the center was. They actually described it. It was a place called Kanilaau Heiau, which was located sort of near the intersection of Alapai and Derrick and Street in downtown Honolulu. Okay. There was a big heiau there. Battle of Nu'uanu actually started there with the first engagement, but that was where they said was the people of the entire universe. And I believe it. You know, in the middle of the ocean, that makes sense. That's really interesting. Thousands and thousands of years ago, the people who lived in Hawaii were, they had an awareness about not only themselves, but about the rest of the entire planet. Well, they may not have known what was out there, but they knew with their own communication, with their aqua that this was the center. But they knew they were making an impact. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. They're led by their people as well. Wow, that's amazing. That's you know, amazing. I mean, the Hawaiians are everywhere in the world. You know, everywhere. Yeah. So we are a global community, the Native Hawaiian people. Yeah, yeah. And I believe that wherever they are, they don't have to be here to teach and practice the culture. I'm sure they are practicing it wherever they are. Right, so now the Spread city. the aloha wherever you are. The secret is out. We've infiltrated the planet, folks. It's too late to see. And we but welcome you, know, you all to join us in thinking Hawaii. Yep, absolutely. But you know what? That's really the best news out there. Is that there are people out there all over the planet, certainly on the planet now, who really love and have a deep care and connection for the land, for the place. And, uh, you know, the mission, the role is to nurture it so not only when the land thrives, the people thrive. That message has been carried literally circling the globe. Yes. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? And you know what's also interesting? Wherever you go in the world, if you just mention the word Hawaii, it lifts people's hearts. Yes. That tells me that even in the word, it heals people's spirits. So we, I know we have a kuleana. We, we are missing the boat here if we're not doing what we can, whatever we are, to use our aloha spirit and the, the mana we have in our cocoa is to help other people. It's not about being selfish or grumbling about being selfish. It's about helping wow. in whatever way we can. Wow, well, thank you. My, Hilani, my request to you is keep on helping people. You're doing a great job. Keep it up. Don't stop. And mahalo for being on the show today. Thanks for great. Keep doing what you're doing. To our viewers, mahalo to you for joining us on this very special visit out here in this wonderful place in Hawaii Native. Remember, you can watch us on the web 24-7 on point.
the mana connects you to everything. Your Yopakuna, your Almakula, your Akula. So what we believe in can make us stronger or weaker. And you had some points you wanted to make about that, yeah? Scientific studies back up this Hawaiian belief. And I, I, I kind of wanted to start by um, to tell a little bit about Mahilani, who is definitely our organizer for our club and, and really motivates us to do so many things. So when she told me she was presenting, she had emailed me and I said, my email literally said, let me know if you need help. I meant like carrying her box in or something. <laughs> and, and then we get the agenda, I'm like, oh, my name's on there. I guess uh, I volunteered to do, you know, help her with that. But um, I, I've been very privileged to do a lot of um, activities with um, Mahilani and with the Hawaiian Civic Club. One of the um, leadership development trainings that we had attended a few months ago, um, something that resonated with me was um, about about this, about thinking Hawaiian. And um, it, I'm tr I kind of tried Googling it earlier today because it did have such an impact. But um, the, the speaker uh, spoke about how we have these inner thoughts. And, and I know pretty much everyone can agree you talk to yourself all the time. Mm -hmm. okay. So, oh, sorry. So they were uh, what they what the studies have shown, and these are studies done by UCLA and Stanford University, was that on average um, a male speaks about ten thousand words a day. Women, we double that, twenty to twenty-five thousand words spoken per day. However, the amount of thoughts that we have range. Um, some studies are as low as twenty thousand. Some are fifty thousand. Some say a hundred thousand thoughts per day. And what do we do with that time? Uh, with with those thoughts. A lot of it is real nonsense things. A lot of it is worrying about um, the past. Oh, I should have done this, or oh, if I had just done that better, or I wish I could go back. Um, other things are fantasy land. You know, you watch the news and somebody won $350 million. Well, what could I do with the $350 million if you won the lottery? Um, so what, you, what we can do to, I guess, live this uh, with, with the Hawaiian thought is, to make sure that we're aware of, of, of what we're thinking about. Because a lot of that energy, or a lot of those thoughts, the studies have shown, are negative. Um, so if we can be aware of what we're thinking about and try to stop that, you know, immediately if we're daydreaming about something, okay, that's kind of nonsense. What is the task at hand, or what do we need to accomplish, or trying to be positive with our thoughts. So that was something that really resonated with me, and I've tried to do in my daily life when I start to daydream go back to thinking positive and thinking uh, about the good things in a situation, even though you might be put in situations that are you know, negative, what are the good things that you can take from that and continue to have those positive thoughts because your, your thoughts are what guides you throughout your day and really you speak to yourself more than you speak to any other person, so make sure you try to incorporate positive thinking. And you cannot be influential with others unless you're strong. So your thinking has to be Positive and Pono. We all, hopefully everybody knows what Pono is. Anybody doesn't know what Pono is? Actually, Pono has many meanings. The one I like, the one I work, live by, is the balance. Besides being, you know, uh, righteous, however we define that, I always think of it as being in harmony with the universe, with the people I'm interacting with, with myself, <coughs> the environment. That pono is that balance. So when you say Malama Pono, which is my email address, it's my eternal search to find balance in everything I do. So when there's a conflict, and I've been asked this question before, you know, what happens when the scientists and the practitioners have a conflict? How would you resolve it? So basically, you've got to look for the balance. It can't be all one way or the other. So that's how you institute a Hawaiian cultural value into conflict situations, is to try to find what is the balance among all the information that you gather. So. But anyway, um, we also know that there are scientific studies that prove that the more positive thinking we have, that affects our health. If you're, if you're sick and you think that you're never gonna get well, it'll take a longer time getting well. If you're um, positive about, I wanna get out of this bed, I wanna go, you know, walking, doing other things. That tends to help people get better faster. Now that may not have, that may not be true with the more serious kind of illnesses, but you know, we, we have been known, the Hawaiians have been known to cure cancer, so that it can help it help happen in the future. You need to think 
yes, we have that cure. We need to find the, the types of elements in our environment that help cure cancer because our, some of our young people are going to find it one day, you know, and be there to help our people because they did it before. Um, also, how we project to other people. You know, are we, what we send out, our signals, they pick it up. So sometimes it's just a speculation, maybe we're paranoid about what the other person is thinking or doing. They pick it up and, and it becomes a reality, even if it wasn't going to happen in the first place. I think it's good to kind of always be cautious in how we react to other people. I have to, I catch myself all the time because I want to react, I have to stop that <laughs> because I got to look for balance and try to be respectful of other people and practice the values. So we wanted to ask you folks to talk whoever wants to, you know, about um, Hawaiian core values. On the back, we have a bunch of values that, you know, we collected. Uh, but I, I know there are many more, but these are just some. And we wanted to ask you folks to, to discuss which ones you think have the greatest potential to help us in influencing others, whether it's personal life or in the broader community. Um, you guys, anybody want to start? Yeah, I think for myself, I know that uh, mahalo is a big one. I think we all should be in gratitude because even though you're challenged with some really negative, heavy stuff, <coughs> when you go back to that place of being in gratitude for the health of your children, that you can even breathe, that you have a place to live, it really brings you back to center against the <coughs> balance that you really do have everything that you need. And that, for me, has helped me in so many situations, and that's how I live my life every single day, is being in gratitude. Okay. What else in the circle? Yeah. Um, I think that ha ha is super important as well because I think that ha ha you take yourself out of the picture mm -hmm. and you address your environment, your surroundings with uh, compassion, and that you're able to step back and um, appreciate everything that's around you and see the value in someone else's perspective. Yeah? Not your perspective has to be right all the time. So I think ha 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 is super important. That's good. That's another thing that helps us be influential with other people. We don't come on too strong and pushy. People tend to listen to yeah? Any other thoughts? Don't be quiet, don't be shy. Yes. <laughs> mother uh, from the Native American side, her people had lost their, lost their whole tribe to, you know, everybody, nothing but the Mohawk left. And so coming here, I feel I have the, maybe the, the, the DNA to understand, but none of the childhood teachings. And, and I think what's most important for me as a Western person to learn and to carry forward is the value of Juliana. Because unless in one's affairs in the world, if you do not carry the personal responsibility for your conduct and your actions, the personal responsibility for your choice of the attitude of gratitude, the personal responsibility for seeing yourself as part of the universe and not, you know, the big North <coughs> or Netka, it's the only thing that can, I think, act as a counterbalance to the price system. Because the, the price system is how you know everything in the world is allocated. It's all you know everything is for sale, and and it, for me it starts. My kuleana is to say there the most priceless things are not for sale, and it's for me to stand up for that. And I think that is the, the for me the, the one word that branches out to everything else on here. And okay, so okay. any others? So I have a few. Well, I have a few. I'm, can I? Go for it. Go for it. <laughs> okay, the one I like is um, Ho'omokoko, Kako, and Kako'o. It's, um, I'll start off with Kako first. It's all of us together. Because I know, um, you know, the Hawaiian culture, especially the Hawaiian people, we're not as close as we should be. We're not as, um, we're not as tight as we should be in our culture and we're strong with. If we're all together and helping one another, and we'll all see the same perspective and the same image and the bigger picture in the future, I think our culture will be way more stronger. 
what they went through and to appreciate our culture. And then kako'o. Our culture definitely needs a lot of kako'o and support from everyone. <clears throat> Even if you have kako'o Hawaii or not, you know, everyone can help one another. Yeah, um, I really like my Ma'e because what means cleanliness and at home, you know, we all got to do chores and clean bathroom and all this kind of stuff. So I'm just so used to like the idea of cleanliness. But not only that, it teaches me it, it's a lifestyle too. It's not only your house, it's how you live, uh, how you take care of your environment and all this kind of stuff. And I also feel like it's not only the, a physical thing, but it's also a spiritual thing, a cleanliness. And that also relates to um, Kalana, which is to release or forgive. Because then when you do that, you're kind of cleansing yourself of all of that, you know, that bad, uh, negative vibes. Mm -hmm. And to me, that just really um, is important to me. And that's what my um, my parents and my, my siblings have <coughs> always just been trying to teach me. So that's cool. Any others? Um, I would say on the to educate, not all, all. but um, I think that's why we're all here is to educate ourselves. That's why I'm in this class, and it starts with us to educate ourselves and what we need to take back to our families to educate. And I think it also stems not just starting with the mobile, but starts with the the cake. Realize our culture was selfish. We bash. I mean, I understand you say you weren't raised with Hawaiian values. I'm Hawaiian. I was raised here, and I wasn't taught Hawaiian values either. You know, my nana was told it was shameful to be Hawaiian. She was never taught the language, never taught la'au, lomi, none of those things. And to be here surrounded by women who were, I'm so happy that people were radical enough to say, no, you know, we're going to be kono. We're going to stick to what our kuleana is. And so, as a woman with two kiki, that's how I started getting the ball rolling again, is to start with them, because they need to know. And if you raise your kiki, you know, we've got a chance. Okay, somebody else have a hand on this side. Yes.
that communities are so diverse. We're diverse as a people. We have a wide range of educational status, economic status, health status. Our young people are being educated, growing up to be fine men and women in our community. I think the pain of our past has really helped to strengthen us as a people. And so I feel that our culture is very strong. And I see it in our Opio, I see it in our Keiki, I see it in our Kupuna, that our pain in the broken places is where we can receive the blessings from Akua and where we can strengthen. And we don't forget, we don't you know, let those things go, but I think because we aloha ourselves, we aloha our family, our communities, the future generations, we are, you know, I think as a people, we're moving forward in very positive ways. So I have, I think aloha is just, to me, just the greatest thing. And it's a universal word, yeah. <coughs> Everybody, yeah. <laughs> Anybody else? You have um, I was looking at the, the list and my last name is Hanamano. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so then I saw that I went, oh, I mean, I like it because, um, you know, for us to be honorable to to ourselves, to each other, even to the Aina, you know, and um, so it, it just kind of, I, mean, I don't want it to be a burden, I want it to be something um, that I can really live up to, yeah, so, and, and I learned this in the other Hawaiian values class that was Hanu Hanu too, oh, <laughs> Anyone else? Yes. I have two on the list that, that touched my heart the most. The first is Olu Olu, the second is Viva Ole. And they sort of go hand in hand as a Hawaiian woman. You know, oh, she's so nice. The nice thing about being really pleasant and being really comfortable in your skin is that you invite intimacy. When you invite intimacy, you are taking a very courageous step to engaging with people from all walks of life. If your heart is strong and open, you will engage that other person. They'll feel comfortable with you. They'll feel pleasant with you. And that's really how we want to walk the earth, being comfortable with each other, being pleasant with each other, being courageous to share who we are as Wahine, and not afraid of where we come from. So those are my two words. Any other thoughts? job when I used to work for the Board of Water Supply. Um, when I was able to, I got them to have a song written in Malama Ikavai, because before that it was pure water man's greatest need. He said, well, we need something that's more, <laughs> going to go deeper into the islands. And so we 
got jealous at us to write that song, which still today people love that song. It reminds us in our very deepest now that our Korean is also my life. It's a Hawaiian God of values. So when you teach your kids to, to, to turn off the tap and stuff in your house, you're actually teaching them a Hawaiian God. Not to waste. So it happens in everywhere we go and everything we do. And I think that hopefully you take back with you the, the reminder that we are the role models in our little, in our family, in our work group, in our you know community. So whatever way we can. For me, it's a lifelong journey toward the Pono, you know. Practicing all these values. We have to try to incorporate all these values. But they all are ways in which we can get the world to be better. It starts with us. It will start with the guy on TV running for office. It really it's a grassroots. It's a, you know, I feel like it's a big club. So one of the big change, the challenges in the clubs is that association wants all the clubs to serve the association. And I say, no. We gotta take care of the grassroots. The association gotta take care of the, the grassroots, not the other way around. So it yeah. really starts with us in our own neighborhood, in our community, so in our family. So I hope that you guys will think about that as you go on. And um, I wanna ask you, uh, oh, wanna one more thing about the boundary market thing. It's gone island-wide now. Oahu Council has uh, adopted a project to complete that Moku, uh, uh, that boundary market project where meeting tomorrow in the, in the Eva Moku, if any of you from Eva, I don't remember anybody was from Eva. So we're, we're working on theirs. The Konomoku last meeting is next week, Saturday. If any of you are in the Konomoku, that's from Kuleo'o to Moanalua. Uh, they're gonna be talking about their sites, their locations of their boundaries next week, Saturday. So then Wailua Moku is the end of September. So if any of you want to do that, that's exciting. I understand Maui is going to pursue the same thing, and Big Island is also pursuing boundary markers that we haven't heard from Kalua yet. So, but the idea, and we, I get this all the time from the windward signs that are already up, people are really excited about Thank taking you. back you. Thank you the so names much. of their places. Yeah. Even the non-Hawaiians say, oh, I'm so happy I know where I live now. Mm. <laughs> the idea was we wanted people to know where they live because you ask them where they come from, oh, Kaneo, oh no, you're in part of Waihei, or you're in Heiia, or you're in, you know, you're in Kaalaya, and there's so many great little level that goes with these Amboas, so part of the project was to kind of teach people the stories too, so. I was confused when I was in Hawaii Kai and I saw Pahupua Martians, and it's from something that I heard of an Apupua at the time. But the, the, one of the concepts that the Apupua can take forward into the world is that the, the local sustainability includes the What's, what's the word, the, 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 clam, the, cl the cleansing? What's the word? Yes, and how you dispose of your waste and effluent is something that in, back in the day, the, the Native Hawaiians reused everything. Mm -hmm. it recycled and reused, and it was, it was the ahupua was a system where there wasn't like a container of stuff that was then dumped somewhere else. And, and I think if we, brought back that, that thinking that what is within the natural boundaries of our ecosystem, if we can relate to that and take care of that, because it, it, it is in a way like a closed system. There's no place where you can have a waste dump because it's right in the middle of everyone's yard. And, and I think that's one of the most valuable contributions that this that is a good kind of thinking point, yeah. Because there's no place to dump your crap. You know? Well, then they're going to let us burn rubbish in the back of the Thank you. Thank you. We have to have a conversation with the fire department. They may not get sleep. Mahalani? Yes. Uh, it's 1130, but I also wanted to remind you the brochures. Oh yeah, we have some brochures that if you want to take samples of the brochures from the Koala Poco Project, we brought some with us so you can take them. And some of the stories about the development are pretty cool. So. Okay, well, thank you all.